really is just a glorified cook. Or a cook is a glorified chemist. Be careful. You know how you tend to burn things. I don't know. Well, if you can calm down from your sugar rush, we can get started. Can you do that? Yes. What do we need to do first? Molds. Molds? So for... For a glass pane, what kind of mold would you use? A baking pad? Good. Okay, what recipe would we use? Three and one half cups of sugar. One quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar to prevent crystallization by making it more acidic. Two cups of water. One cup of white corn syrup. Oil to 300 slowly while stirring. This boiling process should be very slow. And we can check to see the texture of the sugar as the temperature slowly rises. Well, why? Sugar has very unique properties. By controlling its temperature, you can control its texture and also control what type of cake, candy, or icing you make from it. Okay, cool. Well, let's get started. So we begin with our one liter beaker filled with sugar to the 826 milliliter mark. Pouring it into our Pyrex measuring cups, you can see that this equates to about three and a half cups of sugar, which we add to a large pot. Next, we take our gallon jug and pour out two cups of distilled water and put this to the side. Do not add it to the pot yet. Before adding the water, we measure out one cup of white corn syrup. Then we add the white corn syrup to the pot. To ensure we remove all of the corn syrup from the measuring cup, we rinse it out into the pot using the two cups of distilled water we measured out earlier. Finally, we add a pinch or about a quarter teaspoon of cream or tartar. Then we add our pot with our solution in it onto the oven and put it on a low heat. Now, while our sugar solution is slowly heating up, we lay out a baking pan for our mold. We line our pan with tin foil to make it easier to remove our sugar glass pane later. Then we add a liberal amount of non-stick cooking spray to the tin foil. Finally, we remove the excess to leave just a thin layer of cooking spray. Next, we increase our heat to a medium-high level and stir with a heat-resistant ladle. If you look at your thermometer closely, you'll notice that your temperature scale is labeled. 
For a chef, this is very important. A sugar solution cooked to 230 degrees Fahrenheit or 110 degrees centigrade is at the syrup or thread stage and might be good for something like cotton candy. At 240 degrees Fahrenheit or 116 degrees centigrade, it is at the fudge or softball stage. At 302 degrees Fahrenheit or 150 degrees centigrade, we are at the hard crack stage. This is the sugar glass stage. So we can see that as we go up in temperature, we also increase the hardness of our candy. Later, we will look at the chemistry behind this because there is a reason for it. And just a hint, it has something to do with water. The sugar solution will eventually begin to boil and produce a large amount of water vapor. This solution will begin to thicken as the water boils off. The solution will also begin to caramelize or turn yellow as it approaches the 302 degrees hard crack stage. At 302 degrees we remove the pot from the heat and pour it into our mold. We then let it cool off for a few hours and using the tin foil lift the glass pane from the mold or pan. The end result is our yellowish but clear sugar glass pane. Unfortunately, I want my glass to be clear and not yellowish. Wait, sugar is made from beet, and maybe beet sugar will give a clear result. Wait, you idiot. Be quiet, I know you didn't need it all. So I'll take three and a half cups of beet sugar, one cup of corn syrup, two cups of water, one quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar, heat, stir, and it still looks yellow. Cause it's still sucrose, you idiot. Whether from beets or sugar cane, table sugar is sucrose. Meaning it is a disaccharide made of the two sugars, fructose and glucose. The outer carbons of these two sugars are connected to an oxygen, making it an ether. This is very important when we are making sugar glass. An ether bond is a carbon-oxygen-carbon linkage bonded at an angle of about 110 degrees. It is important to note that ethers are very stable and hard to break apart. And ethers undergo but one type of reaction, and this is cleavage by acid. So cream of tartar is acidic. Actually, it's potassium bitartrate and under heat it will attack some of the sucrose molecules at the ether location and separate the sucrose into fructose and glucose. Crystallization occurs between like molecules or between sucrose and other sucrose molecules. But by replacing sucrose there are fewer sucrose molecules to bond back together. The corn syrup also helps prevent crystallization because it contains maltose, and maltose further inhibits sucrose-sucrose bonding. So why the water? Because sugar and water are both polar, and polar molecules attract each other. For water, the oxygen portion of the molecule has a slight negative charge, while the hydrogen side has a slight positive charge. Sugar is also polar, and hence water is good at dissolving sugar. Sugar has multiple OH groups, which are polar, and hence multiple polar sites to react with water. This is important because sugar does not melt, it decomposes with heat, much the same way that wood does. Take a look at ice when it melts. You can take a solid frozen piece of water and melt it to a liquid.
and when you're done, you can freeze that water back into a piece of ice. Whether solid, liquid, or vapor, it remains water. Watch when we heat sugar with an intense flame. It immediately turns yellow and then brown. It caramelizes, a step that involves hundreds of chemical products including fructose and glucose, as well as condensation, dehydration, and polymer formation. You can see vapor being given off as oxygen and hydrogen form water vapor along with other gases including carbon monoxide. As the breakdown of the sucrose molecules continue, it turns black and eventually stops boiling and releasing gas until we are left with a carbon ash similar to burnt wood. And we can visually see that sugar does not melt, it decomposes. So we need the water to act as a solvent to dissolve the sugar. So why do we need heat? First, because molecules that are heated move faster, increasing the rate at which water and sugar molecules collide. And second, boiling the solution slowly removes the water molecules from the solution allowing sugar molecules to get closer together and form a solid. Just how solid the sugar becomes is dependent on how much water we remove. Look at the scale again on our thermometer. You can see the different stages of candy that are created at different stages of heat. This also corresponds to the last column where you can see that the type of candy we create is directly related to how much sugar and water remains in the solution. As a side note, if you want to cut your sugar glass, you can do so by scoring it. Here we use a scoring knife used for concrete backer board that we bought from Home Depot. So Eric, look what I've got. Brown sugar rectangles? No, breakaway glass. Looks like brown sugar to me. I get it. I know that a sugar paint is boring and it's still brown, but next week we'll use isomalt to make it clear and we're going to make a mold so that we can show people how to make sugar glass whiskey bottles and sugar glass shot glasses so they can use that for their Halloween decorations next month. So say good night Eric. Good night Eric.